I get a lot of beginners getting really confused um, with the outputs of Jeff and Pwn Debug. When I started with buffer overflows, I used just GDB and every time when I wanted to look at the registers or every time when I wanted to look at memory, I, al I always had to type info registers or examine memory at this register address or, or whatever, you know, had to do everything by hand. And by that, it was very conscious decisions what information I want and what was important to me. Now, a lot of people install Jeff right away and they ask me questions about why certain buffer overflows or things not work or they don't understand anything. And these, this output really confuses them because uh, suddenly they get bombarded with information and they don't really understand how to read this information. And so they look at, for example, these values here to the right and they say, well, there's a string in RAX. And I use that language as well. I would also say in RAX is a string, but that's not really the case. In RAX, RAX is a register. It can just hold 64-bit values. So in there is just a, str uh, um, a string. It's just a, an address, and that just points. That address is the location where this string is stored. And Jeff is just nice, and it displays us, hey, look, at this location there's a string, and it just displays it in a nice way for us. So we have like the contextual understanding that this points at a string. Um, but yeah, so this can be a bit confusing, but now you know. Yeah, so now we just execute the things. So we move RAX into RCX, so just we copied that from RAX into RCX. Here again, you can see that GDB is really cool. Every time when an instruction changed a value, it will be highlighted in red. And so this moved the value into RCX, that's why it's now red here at the front because this was updated. Of course, every time when you execute an instruction, the instruction pointer is also updated, move to the next instruction, that's why it's also red. So this is very nice to very quickly look only at the uh, registers that were even affected, that even like matter right now. And yeah, and now we come to the next line. We increment RCX. Uh, Jeff colors the addresses based on to what um, memory location they belong to. Uh, in my color scheme, um, stack addresses were this purple color and heap addresses were green. So now RAX is pointing into the heap. And here, for example, this information GDB shows us here is a bit um, useless. So at this location is another address, which points at another address, which points at another address, which maybe I didn't look into it, but could be that this is the linked list of uh, free blocks. Uh, so this is a... Um, uh, an, a newly allocated heap um, block and the first byte should be the next address or pref address or something like that. And yeah, it just, uh, you, you get it. But yeah, the point is that now you should ignore, for example, all of this because that's not interesting to you. Uh, we are also writing information to that. So we don't really care what information is there already because we are writing over it now anyway. Does that make sense? Um, or at least it, it will come up that we write to that, but yeah. For now, we, for now, we just loaded this value and now we also copy it into RCX, as you can see here. I was here very worried about people understanding this. Uh, I mean, like beginners understanding this because we are having here ASCII zeros or ASCII nulls and we talk about zero bytes. And I know that ASCII and like how bytes and ASCII characters like kind of relate to each other and stuff. It's a bit confusing at the beginning, especially when we talk about an ASCII zero, but then an ASCII byte because an ASCII, uh, see, I'm screwing up, an ASCII zero, but a zero byte that an ASCII zero is in fact a hex three zero byte, you know, like it can be confusing. Is this not a null byte? No, it's an ASCII zero and it's a three zero byte, you know? Um, so yeah, I don't know, can be confusing. So this is also maybe a bit confusing. Um, we copied the null byte and the constantly the string, you know, was at the front, the byte that we handle, and now suddenly the null byte is at the end. This is just, you know, a little big onion. I forgot which one we have here, but um, numbers, you know, the the first byte, so to say, is at the end. It's very confusing when you start out. It, you get used to it at some point. Um, but yeah, so the first byte, so to say, like, 
if you go byte by byte, then this is the first byte is here, the, the zero byte. Um, yeah. So in theory, it's a zero byte and then ASCII 000, if you think of it, is a string. But again, a zero byte is the end of a string. That's why Jeff says, hey, wait, this is not a string. A string is not a null byte. Um, this is not valid ASCII, starting with a null byte. That's why it now displays it as a generic number. A generic value doesn't know what to do with it.